Welcome and hello, this is Jennifer McGuire and I'm glad you're here today. So in today's video, I have a load of card examples for you. And I'm sharing a technique where you can create your own stamps out of many different things. In fact, you can create your own stamps out of embossing folders, dies, other stamps, stencils, and even things you find around your household. Now this video does feature a specific product needed in order to do this technique. I try to avoid doing videos like that, but I had so much fun playing with this that I really wanted to share it with you. And thankfully the price of this product is very reasonable and it can be used over and over again, just like a regular tool. Okay, so this is the Simon Hurley Stamping Foam from Ranger. Now, from what I've heard, there was a stamping foam long ago in the industry, maybe a couple of them. I don't know how I missed it back then, but I never had used one before. So this is new to me. If you have one of those stamping foams from long ago, you could probably use that. This stamping foam is three by four and a quarter, so it fits nicely in the center of a card, or you could tape two together and cover an entire card front but I like when it's just one in the center, it's a great backdrop. Now this is a moldable foam, so you can create your own stamps, and I'll demonstrate that a lot throughout this video. The best part is you can reheat it and reuse it over and over again, just using a heat gun. So it is a tool that can be used many, many times for your crafting. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate many different ways you can create your own stamp with this. But please keep in mind, there are many more things you can do. I'm just taking you through the different things that I tried today. I will first show you lots of backgrounds I made with the stamping foam in different ways, and then I'll show you loads of card examples. Okay, so first I'm going to make a stamp from a stamp, and I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Radiating Heart Background Stamp. I've used this one before. Now I found when using the stamping foam, I got better results and better control if I taped it to an acrylic block. You could definitely use the stamping foam as is and just use it as a stamp without an acrylic block, but I found this to just be easier. I got better ink coverage, I got better stamping, I just got better results. So I just taped it there with some masking tape. Now to use the stamping foam, you need to heat it up between 10 and 15 seconds with a heat gun. I try to keep the heat moving and I usually go about 15 seconds. Once I've heated up that surface, I'm going to quickly take it onto my stamp and press it in firmly. And because I have an acrylic block, I can press it in pretty even too. So just leave it there for a few seconds and when you take it off, you have a reverse image of your background stamp. So that background stamp was an outline pattern. This has more solid area. Now you can use many different inks with this and I'll demonstrate that throughout the video. First here I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks just because they really have beautiful color to them. It has a pigment and dye property so it'll stamp really nicely. So I'm putting some picked raspberry at the top and then I'll do abandoned coral towards the other side. Now when applying ink, you don't ink it up as you do a regular stamp. You lightly rub the ink on it or lightly tap. You don't want the ink to get into the nooks and crannies. You wanna leave those uninked so you get the pattern when you stamp it. You'll see many different ways I do this throughout this video, um, but really you'll get the hang of it once you try it. So here I applied the two different colors and then I'm just gonna stamp it onto white cardstock and there we got a reverse image of the background stamp that we made this stamp from. Now this time I'm going to apply some Distress Oxide ink and then I'm going to give it a light mist of water. So when I do a light mist of water, I actually spray the water into the air and then wave my stamp through it, maybe three or four times, so I don't get blobs of water, just a light mist on it. And then I'll stamp it again. So you can see you can get different results if you add a little water to it. After cleaning off the stamp with a wet cloth, I'm now trying the same stamp, but with a different ink. This is Gina K Designs Dye Ink, and you did this all with Dusty Rose. So it's just one color, and look at that great result that you get. And again, you can do multicolor. You can stamp this as many times as you want. So basically, you're creating a reusable stamp. But what's even better is we can reheat this and create more stamps when we're done. 
as I mentioned, when I'm done, I use a wet cloth to clean it. This is a baby wipe that I resprayed with water once it was dry so I could reuse it again. And then I just wipe it clean with a dry cloth or wipe it dry with a dry cloth. So now we can reheat this and do a new pattern, create a new stamp. So all you have to do is apply heat to it again and you'll see it disappear. It's like magic. And now once this is hot, I can press it onto another stamp. So let's do another example with a background stamp. I really like this one from Hero Arts and I thought it would be fun to do a reverse of it using the stamping foam. Now when I stamp with this, I'm just doing a single impression, but what you could do is overlap. Say the original stamp and then layer it with the stamp that you made. And because it's a reverse image, you'll get a really cool look. You really can try a lot of things with this, but today I'm just kind of exploring the different things that you can use for basic backgrounds. This time I'm using my Distress Ink Cubes to apply a few different colors of ink here. I think I have Peacock Feathers, Broken China, um, Lucky Clover, and then probably some Cracked Pistachio. So I put a little ink here and there. You can miss this first if you want to or not. It just depends on the look that you're going for. And I encourage you to experiment because you can use this over and over again. So find what inks work best with how you create these foam stamps and also with whatever paper you're using or whatever product you're making the impression from. Now here I thought without re-inking the stamp and just giving it a little bit of a mist, I'd stamp it again for a lighter second generation. And you can see it still stamps nice. It's a very soft second generation, but it works great. Before we move on, I thought I'd do another impression with this one. This time I'm using oxide inks in green. And then I will do a light mist on it. Again, it's kind of waving it through the mist of water, kind of like when you walk through your sprayed perfume. And there we have another result. So it was fun to take that background stamp and now have the reverse of it. Just another way to stretch your stamps for a new look. Okay, so after cleaning the stamp, I'll reheat it to lose that pattern so we can do a new one. This time, I thought I'd show you how you can use embossing folders with the stamping foam. And what's cool is you can use both sides of the embossing folder when you open it and get two different stamps from it. Embossing folders are becoming popular again. I like their price point. It's lower than, you know, like a large die or large stamp set. And it works wonderfully with stamping foam. Okay, so I've heated up my stamping foam here and now I'll press it onto one side of the embossing folder. This one is a paper rose embossing folder that I really like. And there you can see the stamp that we get. This time I'm using Gina K dye ink and I'm just lightly rubbing it over the surface. You only want the ink to really get on the raised areas and not much behind it. I gave it a light mist of water and now when we stamp it, I created a stamped image from an embossing folder. So now I'll clean off my stamp, reheat it to lose that pattern, and now I'm going to press it into the other side of the embossing folder. This will give a reverse. That's how the embossing folders work. So this time I'll lightly rub ink over the surface, but we're going to get a reverse image of the first one we did. So this stamping foam is a great way to get more out of your embossing folders by creating stamps from them. Now I know people are gonna ask if there's any other product that people may have on hand to create your own stamps like this. I don't know of anything, but you could definitely experiment with other things you have. Uh, this really works well in that you can reuse it many, many times. Okay, so now I'm going to make another impression the same as the last one we did. Then I'm gonna clean the stamp, reheat it, and go back to the first side of the embossing folder. So I'll press that in there, and now I'm going to ink this up lightly and stamp it right on top of our last one. So we'll get a layered look. So we're stamping the image and then the reverse of the image on top of each other. So you can get really creative by layering all of these different stamp impressions if you want to. Now that last example is a regular embossing folder, but the stamping foam works really well with 3D embossing folders, such as this one from Altenew. So I, I put heat on the stamp, pressed it onto the embossing folder. Now this time I'm going with, in with Gina K Sea Glass Ink and pressing it pretty firmly. Then I will come in with Hero Arts Ocean Ink and just lightly go over the top. Then when I press this firmly, I get a two-tone image. Because with um, 3D embossing folders, you have like smooth ups and downs on it. 
So if you really get ink onto a lot of the surface here, like I'm doing here, pressing pretty firmly, then lightly graze a different color over that. When you press firmly, you get both of those colors to show up, which I think is super fun. So this would work with any 3D embossing folder. I really like this one. I know it's out of stock everywhere, but check out that cool pattern. So much fun to do, and you can do it over and over again with different color combinations. Here I went bold. I did Simon Says Stamp Hot Mama Ink, really pressed that in there. And then over the top very lightly, I used Gina K Wild Wisteria. And look at this cool result. So again, try whatever embossing folders you have. It gives your embossing folder a new life, a great way to stretch your supplies. So I liked the result of using a 3D embossing folder so much I decided to do some more. This is the Simon Says Stamp Floral Field Embossing Folder. You can see that beautiful impression. And remember, you can use the other side of the embossing folder too for a different look. So here I really pressed into it the uh, Gina K Sea Glass Ink. Then I'm taking Hero Arts Ocean and going very lightly over the surface and then stamp it. So usually I ink up the stamping foam very lightly going back and forth. But in the 3D embossing folder case, it's cool to do it both ways. And you get a really neat layered impression. So here is another one. This time I did Gina K Sea Glass and then did a Hero Arts um, Antigua ink over that. So very lightly. And there we can see the two colors that are built together. We got that teal color and then a green on the top. Such a fun technique. And to show you that you can clean off the stamping foam, even if it may stain a little bit and move on to other colors, here is a yellow and pink version of that too. Okay, so let's do another 3D embossing folder. This is from Simon Says Stamp. I really like this one. I've used it in videos before. I warmed up my stamping foam, pressed it into one side of the embossing folder, and we'll do the same thing. So I'm really pressing that blue ink into the nooks and crannies, and then lightly putting some Hero Arts Fresh Lawn Green over the raised areas only. Stamp that firmly and check this out. Isn't that cool? I love that two-tone look. Very easy to do and to think it started with an embossing folder. Okay, let's look at ways you can use dies and die cuts with the stamping foam. Here I have a single cardstock die cut from the Honey Bee Honey Vine die set, which I'll show you later. So it's just white cardstock die cut. I'm heating up my stamp foam and then I will quickly, you gotta move quick, quickly move it and press it onto the die cut. And believe it or not, it'll make a great impression that you can stamp with. So any die cut you have, even really intricate ones, will work with this. So think about taking your background dies and making it into a stamp. Your little detail intricate dies like this and making it into a stamp. Here I'm taking that sea glass ink again, very lightly going over the surface here. And I'll keep going until I feel like that all that solid background is inked well. But again, you're doing it very lightly. You could probably use a brayer for this. I tried it and I just found it was easier just to swipe the ink pad along it. But again, don't press firmly. Then we can stamp this and check out that cool backdrop that we have. Now I'll turn that into a card later with the die cut added onto it so that doesn't go to waste either. You can do a lot of fun layering techniques this way too. Okay, now let's try the stamping foam with a die itself. This is the Honey Bee Whimsical Heart die. I have the cutting edge of the die facing up towards the camera. I'll heat up my stamping foam and then quickly press it firmly onto the die. Now, since we press this on the side with the cutting edge, we're gonna get a different pattern than if we did it over the die cut or the back of the die, which I'll show you. So here I'm using a Gina K Dusty Rose and lightly applying that ink over it and then we will stamp it. Now you'll see that there's like, it looks like the hearts are outlined in white. That's because of the cutting edge of the die made a deeper impression there, so no ink got there. So let's press this down and you'll see that cool look. Totally cool to think that was made from a die. Here I'm gonna do it again, but apply an even lighter amount of ink to the raised areas. By the way, if you want multicolor images, you can use uh, any markers that work for stamping and use that on the stamp foam, mist it with water, and then stamp it. But today, I was just looking for backdrops for focal point die cuts, which you'll see later. So I went mostly with one or two colors only. 
Okay, now this time I flip that same die over. So this is the back of the die. So it's very smooth, but you have those openings of hearts. So I'm heating up the stamp foam, and this is the same stamp foam that I keep reheating over and over again. And I'll press that on firmly, and we have a different look. Applying a light amount of Hot Mama ink from Simon Says Stamp. And this time, we just got the hearts, not that like outline that we got when we pressed our stamping foam on the cutting edge of the die. So you can use both sides of your dies. You can use your die cuts, and you can use your negative space die cuts, and they will all give different looks. Let's do another example of using a die with the cutting edge face up and press the foam into that. This is the Poppy Stamps Lattice Die. This one is really cool because when you apply the ink to it, there's a lot of solid area here, right? So I'm doing two different inks here, Wild Wisteria from Gina K and Simon Says Stamp Pot Mama. But you see how those squares look like they have a white outline? That's because the cutting edge made a deeper impression. Now, I'm not pressing this hard enough that it actually damages the stamping foam. The stamping foam is very resilient, so you don't have to worry about the cutting edge doing any damage. And it gives really cool results. Another product that's really popular right now is stencils. They have a great price point and can be used in many ways, and they work great with the stamping foam. Here I have a Gina K design stencil. I heat up the stamping foam, press it into the stencil, and I turn it into a stamp. This time I thought I'd mix a few different colors together. Some light blues, some light greens, and some dark greens. So I'd have a lot of variation on it. I'll give it a mist with my water and check this out. Such a fun way to take your stencil and turn it into a stamp. I still have ink on that stamping foam, so I instead of cleaning it, I'll give it another mist and then stamp it again for a soft second generation. I found that the stamping foam works great for second generation, so I need to remember in the future to always go ahead and stamp that instead of wiping that ink off. This time I'm using the Brutus Monroe Rainbow Stencil, a favorite of mine, and it worked really well with the stamping foam. So now this time I'm using Gina K uh, Peach Bellini ink, covering the whole thing, and then I'll add a darker coral reef just to one side. The stamping foam is really easy for getting that blended variation of color. Look at that, so cool. Now one of the reasons I'm really excited about the stamping foam is not because you can stretch your supply so much, but because of the detail that you can get using it. I was really surprised by that. So even very detailed stencils, very detailed die cuts, detail stamps, it picks up that detail and allows you to create a stamp. So you can really make an impression from many different things. I was eating dinner with my family and I looked at our placemats and I thought maybe this would work. So it's got like this woven uh, texture to it, inexpensive placemat, but man, did it work well with this. So I'm heating up the stamp foam. I'll press it on to my placemat and I pick up this basket weave pattern with all the little details and it turns it into an incredible stamp. This is where I really got an appreciation for how much detail you can get. So check out this one. I put some blues and greens. I'll hold it up to the camera. Look at the detail that I picked up in that little woven pattern. So much fun to do. You could ink over this. You could do it on color cardstock, whatever you want. Because I noticed that great detail, I decided to try it with a detail pierced die. So this is a background die that just has little dots that creates a pierced pattern. So I thought I'd heat up my stamping foam, press it on there, and see if it could even pick up that small pierced pattern. And it worked beautifully. So I was able to create a stamp from that die. I was also encouraged to see that so many different types of inks worked with the stamping foam and stamped nicely. So you can use dye inks, pigment inks, hybrid inks, uh, distress oxide, distress ink, they all worked great. This time I thought I would use one of my favorite dyes from Pink Fresh Studio, it's the Stitched Background, and it was able to pick up the detail from this and turn it into a beautiful stamp. This time I put a couple different colors of Gina K Green dye inks on it and stamped it, and this is such a lovely backdrop to put on a card. So now I have a bunch of these pieces that fit nice in the center of a card. Now I could have stamped it directly onto a note card right in the center and then stamped a sentiment on it and had a nice one layer card. 
but you know me, I love to build up those layers. So I trimmed these all down so that I could add some dimension behind them and put them at the center of cards. You can also die cut from these patterns, do whatever you want. The sky is the limit. Now I used almost all of the pieces I made today. I left out a few, but I have a ton of card examples to share with you. So instead of showing the assembly of all of these cards, I'm really just gonna show you the end results because it's all very basic. I'm just gluing together die cuts, adding a little bit of stamping and allowing these pa patterns to shine. Now I've had people ask me before, why after you create a piece like this, do you put die cuts and sentiments on top of it to cover it? Well, when I create a card, I like the focal point to be both the sentiment and whatever technique I did. And your eye is gonna go to that one spot, usually where the sentiment is. So that's why I like to put whatever I created behind the sentiment. But you definitely could offset it so more of the backgrounds could show. I just wanted to explain why I usually put the focal point right on top. Okay, let's dive into the many cards I have for you today. On a lot of my cards, I used the new Brutus Monroe Butterfly Wings die set. When I saw this, I had to buy it because I love butterflies. There's a good variety in here, but especially because the shadow dies are included in the set. I like shadow dies because when you have a busy background, like these that I've made here, it's nice to have a backdrop to allow your butterfly to stand out. Now on this particular one, I used a cardstock that ended up being too light. So I'm just making the cardstock darker with a marker. I do that a lot with markers or ink, just so I can get a better match to my card. So don't feel like you have to have every color of cardstock. So let's take a closer look at these first three cards. For the note card, I used the same Altenew embossing folder that I used to create the foam stamp that we used on that inked piece there. I then added our ink piece with some additional cardstock layers behind it so it had dimension. Now for the butterfly, I cut it twice from white cardstock and once from the plum colored cardstock. And I glued those together for dimension. I added aqua shimmer pen and glossy accents on top for some shine. Behind that butterfly, I used the shadow die to cut from vellum. That little vellum shadow there allows a butterfly to stand out more on that busy background. Really makes a big difference. If you want your butterfly to stand out even more, you could have used white cardstock for the shadow, but the vellum I thought was a nice soft touch. I did also add some gemstones to the wings of the butterfly just here and there to create a little bit more sparkle. Now on this particular one, I didn't do the glossy accents. Instead, I sprayed that butterfly with a silver glitter spray, which I'll show you in a little bit. Another great way to make your die cut stand out against a busy background is those additional layers of the die cut. So again, I did two white die cuts and then the colored die cut on top, and that really allows it to stand out even more. All of my cards today are hello or thanks cards because that's what I needed, but you could put any sentiment you want to on here. Now this is from a Hero Art stamp set that used to be in a kit, but now you can buy individually, and it has lots of great sentiments for stamping on sentiment strips. You can even decorate your envelope with it. However, for all of my envelopes today, I use this photo play made by me stamp set. I really like the small fun images here that are good for envelopes or even on the back of your card. So you'll see me use that throughout this video. Okay, next I thought I'd do a completely different look. This time I used a heart air balloon die set that I've been wanting to use from my favorite things. It was fun to add this to our little inked backgrounds that we created. Into the balloon, I added this older little panda stamp set from Mama Elephant, and then I used a sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp World of Love stamp set. I'll be using these three products on my next four cards. That heart air balloon die set was really fun to assemble, and you can change up the colors, put different critters in it, or skip the critter if you want to. I added a holographic heart to the front, have my little sentiment on the bottom, and the heart air balloon die set includes the clouds too, so I scattered a few of those also. By the way, the background of that, the frame, is from Reverse Confetti, the outline frame die. I love this die. Unfortunately, it's out of stock everywhere. If you're interested, hit the notify me button on any of the shops. It's a good one. I really like the little uh, pattern that it has. 
Here's another example where I used one of my second generation stamped pieces as a backdrop, changed up the balloon for a different color scheme, and put the sentiment in a different spot. Again, when you make multiples of the same cards, you can experiment with different designs, different um, positions of all of your elements, and even different color combinations. So here is one of the backdrops we made by using a 3D embossing folder and two colors of ink. So when I go and I make a bunch of backdrops and then create a bunch of cards from them, it's a fun opportunity to use new things you may have that you've been wanting to try and also use some old things again to give them more life. So you'll see me use a combination of new and old products today. The backdrop on this one is an older Altenew debossing die. I thought the scallop pattern was fun for clouds. And who would have guessed we made that background with a placemat? Okay, let's uh, move on to a pair of cards that I made with these green pieces. Remember how we did some layering with them? I thought I'd add even more layering to one of them. This is the Hero Arts script stamp. It's a new one and I really like it. I'll use it again later in this video. I'll also be using the Poppy Stamps lattice plate die, which we used earlier to make a stamp. And for a window die cut, I'm using this memory box leaf die along with a stitched rectangle die. Uh, this, these happen to be from my favorite things. There's a lot of stitched dies out there. I really like that faux stitching because it adds a little bit of detail. For sentiment on this one and a little bit later, this is the Brutus Monroe Christopher Sentiment die set. I had to buy this one too because these are large detailed dies of lots of different words. You have celebrate, smile, happy, birthday, joy, hi, and hugs. Then there's the shadow die too, which allows it to stand out more. These are really big so they fill a card nicely. Well, on this one, I just used the small hi, which I thought was fun. And you can see that layered background that we made from creating a stamp from an embossing folder earlier. I used the leaf die and the rectangle die to create a window around it. And then I used the lattice die cut in white on a light green note card. Now on this one, it was the stamp image we did before, but I stamped on top of it with that Hero Art script stamp in a pool ink just to add some more detail to it. So you can use your regular stamps with the stamps you created for layering. Here's another card I made using one of the Brutus Monroe word dies. This is the Big Celebrate, which was my favorite in the set. I cut Celebrate from holographic cardstock and put it on a white cardstock shadow die cut. Remember, the shadows are included in that set. I stamped High Five under it, and on the note card, I used the Altenew 3D embossing folder. Again, I'm continuing my love of holographic cardstock because it picks up whatever colors are around it. And this is the My Favorite Thing stamp set where that high five image is from. Again, just digging through some of my old stamps. Okay, let's do a more elegant example. I hope to go back and do more of these. This one features the new Hero Arts Hello There stamp and die set. So you get the stamp and die together. I just cut off the word there, so I had hello alone. I'm also using that Honey Bee Heart Vine die set. I showed you one of these earlier when we created a stamp from it but now I'm going to use them on that card. So you can see the blue backdrop that we made with the stamping foam. I then use the dies with white cardstock and silver glitter cardstock to create an accent to go along with it. So now our die cut matches our stamping. I added the hello right into the center of it and that is sprayed with a silver glitter spray. I'll link to the one that I use. I used the Hero Arts stamp, the script stamp that I showed you before, with light gray ink on the note card. So I kept this with all blues and silvers and grays, and I think it was really fun to do. These backdrops are also great for large word dies that you may have or large word stamps. This is the Waffle Flower Oversized Heart Stamp and the Heart Die. They have lots of different words, hugs, hello, love you, and more. I thought the heart was fun with our heart backgrounds. So I die cut heart three times from black cardstock and glued it together for dimension and also die cut some small black hearts to scatter too. I stamped always in my right above it. And then I used that Simon Says Stamp detail plate, the ringlet detail plate for the note card on the background. So it just adds a little detail to it. This simple design is fun because all you need is a large word die and a few little accents and you're good to go. 
Okay, so at this point I tried a few different things and I decided I wanted to go back to those butterflies and use them along with a large thanks die from Hero Arts. So this is from Hero Arts. You get the two dies, the thanks and happy, and the stamp set together. So you can use them either together or separately. I'm actually using them se separately today. I'll also be using this older Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Simple Sentiments 2 stamp set. And then also the Pink and Main Let's Polka Embossing Folder. This is a fun backdrop on pretty much any style of card. So I have a bunch of butterfly cards using these elements. For example here, I did the butterfly three times from white cardstock and glued it together and put it on one of our second generation inked backgrounds. The Thanks die cut is two layers of white with, green, or with a blue on top and I use that silver glitter spray. I then use the polka dot background. That embossing folder is so much fun. And then the You Are So Kind from the Simon Says Stamp stamp set for a little stamp sentiment strip. Although I made many of these and the design is pretty simple, I kept the detail in by doing several things. One, on the white note card, I either used an embossing folder or a cover die to add a little bit of detail like I did here with the stitching cover die. I also added layers of cardstock to build up the dimension. I used uh, gemstones on the butterflies to really make them sparkly. And I used glitter spray sometimes and did a little sentiment strip. By doing those additional small steps, it adds a lot of detail to these cards that I'm essentially mass producing. I feel like if I'm mass producing, I still want each card to be special. And I keep it fun by changing up the designs and using different products each time. Also, on all of my die cuts, the Thanks and the Butterfly, I did two layers of white and then a colored on top or a white on top. By doing white for most of the die cutting to build up the layers, you can use an inexpensive white cardstock. I'll link to the one that I use below. And then save your nice colored cardstock for just that top layer. It also looks nice when you look from the side of the die cut. Okay, on some of these, I skipped the thanks and instead used a sentiment from the same Hero Arts combo. I did thinking of you and um, I appreciate you on different cards. I changed up a few of the designs, but I always seem to go back to that butterfly on top of the background. Especially here for these last few, I really liked the uh, stamping we created with that rainbow stencil, so I kept these very simple. All right, there you have loads of cards and some fun ways to create your own stamps with stamping foam. If you are interested in the supplies that I talk about, they're linked below in my YouTube description, much more information over on my blog too. For those asking, my favorite crafty things will be back. Um, I've had a lot of things going on in my life that have kept me busy, but I promise I will finish that out. Thanks for watching. There's a couple other videos here in the middle for you and have a wonderful day.